Welcome to the 11th edition of the Times Techies webinar. I have my colleague Sujit John as a co-host of the webinar today. This week, we have two Python gurus, Sayan Chaudhary and Nabarun Pal. They are key organizers of PyCon. Sayan is a Linux software engineer working remotely for Kinwall, a Berlin-based company focused on open source Kubernetes. He's dabbled with multiple technologies in the past, from building desktop applications to web servers to infrastructure. He's now landed in and he calls it kernel land. He's been a part of various open source communities around Python, Fedora, Kubernetes, and Mozilla. He also runs the Durgapur Linux users group. Nabarun works as an infrastructure engineer at Clarisites, a Santa Clara company that has SaaS platform that enables marketeers to get a unified view of their data. He graduated from IIT Roorkee in 2018 and has since done a variety of work ranging from software, to data, pipelines to infrastructure. Nabarun contributes to diverse open source communities like the Kubernetes and Python. He also conducts lectures on free and open source software at Dirgapur Linux Users Club. Welcome Sayan and welcome Nabarun to the webinar. Over to you both. Thank you, Shilpa, for the introduction. And hi, Sujit. Hi. Hi, Zayan. Hi, Navrun. Yeah. yeah. So shall we go ahead and share? Yeah, this go one? ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, we can see it. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So nice. uh, hi, everyone. Um, folks who are watching us live from Facebook. And so uh, today we are primarily talking about a uh, programming language called Python. And personally, it has been impacting every sphere of my life. And I know, oh, sorry. Uh, and I know that uh, a lot of people who have been using Python use it for every small task they do in their life from small to big. So yeah, so that we will be talking about the language and the title says it. So, before we go ahead, I just wanted to tell you that we are really excited because uh, thanks to Times of India, thanks to Sujit Shilpa for giving us the stage to talk about this uh, language, which we really love and have been telling about people about this language for a very long time. Uh, so uh, I would like Navarun to say like, what is the excitement level he has right now? Like, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it, it feels great uh, to be presenting about Python uh, at such a platform and to spread the word about what the language is, what it, the ecosystem provides you and how can we you benefit uh, from the ecosystem as an engineer, as a manager and uh, several aspects of that. You guys have a lot of experience in oh, both of you in your 20s and already a lot of experience, yeah? Should yeah, so learning, learning more. <laughs> uh, every day um, yeah and we will be coming down like there are parts in the slide where we'll be talking about like how we actually gained this experience and how other folks we also as i told like we have been part of the Durgapur linux is a group and we primarily it's a group where we try to, our motto is to learn and teach so basically we learn and teach people and we do the same like everyone we meet it's not just restricted to the group but yeah so we uh, i would like to now to take the slide and introduce himself so, uh, first of all, uh, thanks Shilpa for the amazing introduction. I am really elated to hear that. Uh, about me, Shilpa has like, uh, told everything. Uh, other than that, I uh, contribute a lot to open source in my free time, uh, notably to the Python India groups, uh, the Kubernetes community, and I have been involved uh, since starting in the industry in uh, data pipelines, and then started into DevOps, going into the security world to a bit. And that's all to summarize about myself. Uh, I would hand over to Sian to introduce himself. Thank you, Navarun. So um, I started back working with Python in 2010. And it was a talk by, it, it happened in my college. So there was a talk that happened uh, on Python by Kushal Das. He is one of the core uh, devs in python and he talked he, there was an example in python where you swap variables and that blew me away and that's how my journey for python started 
and it's been around uh, 10 years now that I've been working uh, or working with Python, interacting with Python, helping building Python communities in India and outside. Uh, I am also uh, contributing to various Python based open source projects. I have contributed to one of the major chunk I would say is in the federal community I manage, I um, mentor and I maintain a lot of uh, Python packages. I used to work uh, with the federal engineering team and I have also contributed to Mozilla has a fair share of uh, Python projects. So I have contributed to, to those my Python projects in Mozilla. And these days I'm working as uh, Shilpa told, I'm working for a company called Kinfolk. It's based out of Berlin and uh, I work on the flat car container Linux team. And these days primarily tinkering out with the kernel side of things. So it's not much of Python, but then this is, was this was another interest area. I really wanted to deep dive uh, into the system side of things. So that's why I joined this team. And it's an, again, an open source project. Open source is really close to my heart. So uh, I work as a day, my day job is to work uh, on open source. And I have been also work, helping out with a couple of the Kubernetes thing. So yeah, so that's my introduction. Uh, moving ahead to the history of the language. So uh, Python was started, uh, or right, I would say why authored by a, a person named Guido Van Rossum. He probably started uh, writing around like in 1980s around that time. And I guess the time, the year he finally re released it, it was 1991. And it was started as a Christmas project uh, to keep himself busy and then it really took over the world in like next 20, 30 years. So um, uh, Python 2 was released around uh, 99, I guess. And then uh, Python 2 was fair share. It got the fair share of the community. And I would say like uh, a lot of people started using it uh, and Python 2 really went uh, deprecated this year itself in the beginning of this year. And uh, it got like a really good craze. And in 2000, late 2008, I guess, uh, uh, Python 3 was uh, released with a lot of new features in it. Uh, and that is basically from the learnings of Python 2.7 and the Python 2 versions. Uh, so uh, these days, the version that is running is Python 3. And with the deprecation that happened for Python 2, um, a lot. It is suggested that people move down to Python 3 and uh, Python 3 is the language that we pick up uh, for all the uh, projects you are doing or anything on that sort. So uh, Python is heavily promoted. So this is Python Software Foundation. It's a NGO that works to promote, protect the Python programming language. It has been uh, uh, it also so if you are part of the uh, like in the community, you have probably heard of this name PSF or the Python Software Foundation. They are uh, in, they help with funds, they build the uh, community as in like, if you're wanting to build the community, you can go, uh, ask them, they have channels to interact with them. And there are people who are in the Python Software Foundation to uh, help you out with different kind of things. So the mission of the PSF is to build the Python community in general and protect the trademark and other things for the Python uh, programming language. And uh, you can also be a member, uh, a basic member. So the link is given there. So it's python.org slash PSS slash membership. So uh, if you want to be a basic member and help in the community, so uh, you can go ahead and uh, subscribe to it. Uh, so, uh, uh, before I move forward, uh, Shilpa, I just wanted to ask, is the slides uh, changing? No. Okay. Uh, it's it said Python, a language impacting every sphere of life. That's what I see now. Yeah. 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 Sphere based. Can you see it now? Uh, no. Okay. No sign. Okay, uh, Nabal, can you share your screen if possible? No. I'll just try to stop the share. Uh, this is a bit weird. But... 
Yeah. Yeah, we can see that. That's a, one of the lower down slides, huh? Uh, can you see that them changing? No. They're still stuck. Now the slide itself is gone. Okay. Uh, hmm. I'm not sure what they should have. Okay, something's come back. Yeah, now yeah. are you sharing the screen? Yeah, yeah, that seems to be changing. Okay, so uh, Nabarun, one thing you can do, uh, you can just quickly, uh, uh, can you go to the first slide? I just quickly move through the slide. So you can just go for five seconds through each slide. Yeah, so this was the slide where we talked about uh, like how excited we are. And yeah. uh, then we move ahead to our introduction slides. And Uh, yeah, so Nabarun gave his introduction and then yeah. followed by me giving my introduction. And then as I told like the history of Python, which was uh, like telling about how Gudo started the language and yeah. the release of Python 2 and Python 3. And followed by the slide that I talked about was about PSF. So yeah. the uh, I was on this slide, so uh, I'll just continue from this slide. So yeah, I, as yeah. I told that, PSF is the uh, body which, uh, the NGO which controls the uh, whole Python community and building the Python international community. So uh, uh, next slide. Yeah, so uh, moving on, as I told, told a lot about community. Uh, so there is a thing about community in PSF or Python in general. And this is a quote, I would, I would like to quote Brett Cannon here. He is a uh, uh, C Python code dev. Uh, yeah. He told once, even we printed it in one of our PyCons in uh, mm -hmm. PyCon Pune, which was came for the language state for the community. So this tells a lot like how uh, interactive or how uh, easy it is to get into the community. Like uh, you probably start with uh, yeah, finding, you start with uh, doing small bugs and then slowly over time, you actually get into the community. That also happened with me. I started with the language. I started solving small issues in different pro programming, in different projects. And slowly down the line, I was in the community, interacting with the Python community. In 2013, I actually uh, went into like a, a mode where I was in the PyCon mm -hmm. India uh, team, helping out, organize the complete event. And I've also been like, I when I went to, uh, uh, PyCon outside, I was volunteering. So it's primarily the joy of community that you get. Yeah, so uh, moving ahead. So I would like to quote again, Neil Armstrong. We know this is a very famous uh, uh, quote. That's one step, small step for a man, one giant leap for mankind. This mm -hmm. is, uh, this Neil Armstrong told when he was uh, put his step on moon. And that was a big achievement for mankind because uh, we kept, went to other, plan, uh, other body outside Earth. So in this scenario, like uh, it was a big advancement of the technologies. Uh, it was a proof that everything that we have been working through science actually worked. And I'll show how we did another achievement. So uh, Navarun, if you change the slide. So uh, we, few days back, if you have seen the news, we got a silhouette image of black hole. So this was the image which came around after a lot of work, hard work. And if you see, there are uh, Reddit talks, there are Reddit threads that are going on this. There are, yeah. so there is a person uh, very famous in the uh, machine learning data science uh, space, Peter Wang, he uh, told about uh, he actually tweeted about this picture where he saw Matplotlib getting used. So there are a lot of Python libraries which are used in getting to this, uh, like SciPy, uh, Matplotlib. There's a, there's a blog by, uh, very famous blog called Ma Mouse versus Python. Mm -hmm. And he actually uh, wrote there a complete detail on how things were. And he also linked from where he got the information. So ideally, which I told, like there has been a TED talk around this, but 
this i would say is a very big leap into again uh in the science um because we have been waiting like we watched movies like in the um interstellar i guess where we <laughs> thought of black holes but this was like i was really excited when i saw this like this is a silhouette image but we got to a stage where we were seeing what could be or what theories were putting the uh theories to test okay this is correct probably yeah okay so uh moving ahead to next slide yeah but uh, given i talked a lot about the python uh, in general how the community is and everything but uh, i really need to back this up with stats like people who are watching it would say what are the stats like how can i believe you so uh, if i so the next slide will show like so stack overflow each year publishes uh, pl- publishes this uh, graph of they do a developer survey on talking about asking developers to fill that up and uh, talk about how python as a language uh, or rather i would say like they do a survey so they and and then at the end of the day or uh, like after two or three months they actually compile everything and give you a very detailed result of it so if you see this is a section i picked up from the survey this year so if you see uh, the most loved so this is kind of the slide where i'm talking of the loved languages uh, and python is on the third so that actually says something and on top of that it is typescript and rust rust is the uh, picking up uh, speed because it's a pretty new language and it's picking up speed moving on to uh, the next slide which is the dreaded one though i don't want to bash any of the languages but this is kind of the ranking they gave but uh, if you see python as expected is on the uh, very last so it's like i would say the opposite of the uh, previous one but people really don't fear it's a very easy to go language and people can just start with the language uh moving ahead i would say the next slide is the wanted slide where i would say it primarily means like how needed it is for the industry and you will see like python really going far ahead if you see the graph it's really way ahead of javascript and other languages below so that tells about like how uh, python is import- important in the industry um yeah so i uh, really believe the slides which uh, stack overflow gives but uh, there's one other uh i would say index that i follow which is the tobay which is the next slide so so this is one that they publishes every, uh, every month i would say i have given the source on the site but they publish every month so this is something i follow and if you see python has been on consistently at the third ranking and i would say that's mm-hmm. pretty good for a language uh, after c and java so i would say like if you are uh, if people are wanting to switch language from java or other languages i would say python is a very good point there you can start off with python yeah mm-hmm. and with that uh, i would give over the slides to nabar to take over the presentation um so as sian showed the about the stack uh, overflow developer survey and as we see from the emotions or the responses from people around the world python is gaining traction and it is wanted now let's figure out why it is so famous and why python is preferred number 1 python is free and open source python has been developed out in the open there has been a lot of community involved all of the decisions that go into the language they are all done out in the open uh, there is something called so any announcement that goes to the language it goes through a proposal structure and people can just come in and comment on that that hey why are you doing this so one of the reasons why python has so user friendly features is because it is free and open source coming on to the next point python is written in a very high level and what i mean by that is anyone can read it it's like english so if you see a snippet of python code it will not take you much time to understand what is the intention behind the code or what the algorithm is trying to do or trying to achieve here on top of that python is an interpreted language so it's very easy to have cycles of development as in you write the code you want to test something you just run it and then if something goes bad you come back to the code change something and then the whole 
uh, loop repeats. Third point is Python is very easy to learn. Now, retracing back to my previous point as to Python is very uh, easy to write. At the same time, when we see that the code is easy to understand as well as easy to write, it becomes easy to learn as well. Uh, the reason being, uh, the idioms or the style in which you write the code is very similar to our way of speaking a language or the semantics of a language. That makes it really uh, dynamic to uh, start with. Now, there are a lot of resources to, uh, to learn Python. And I'll also come back to that later, how someone would get started with Python. But now the question is, where is Python used? Since it is so loved and so wanted, Python is used in a lot of places. Uh, most notably, industry uses Python for most tasks. Then comes academia. Uh, Python is used a lot in academia. So back uh, in college, uh, there was a real uh, like interest in starting with Python because it really resonates with how you want to show your intentions in the code. It is also used a lot in research, primarily data science, machine learning, where you can just write algorithms in a Jiffy. You just need to know the maths. And there are some libraries in Python which makes tasks is very easy for you. Python is also used a lot in the security field, uh, in writing scripts. Again, it stems from the fact that it is easy to learn as well as read as well as write. Uh, and this point keeps on uh, coming up in uh, like very frequent terms. Now, uh, who uses Python? And in which fields you can use Python? So here we uh, uh, try to put up a, what do you say, a word cloud of companies or uh, in industries which use Python or domains which use Python. Uh, by no means, this is definitive. There are a lot more companies and uh, fields which use Python for their primary use cases. Going on, uh, now all of that talk apart. Okay, I'm very excited. How do I become a Python developer? First thing. Just hop on to docs.python.org. It's the official documentation of the language. It's very simple to read, and there is a very good tutorial. Any uh, newbie or a beginner can just go to the tutorial, just go through, just install Python on your machine and go through the tutorial. You would be started with most parts of the language that you would require for uh, writing simple logic. Now, some people also prefer books. What about them? So there are a lot of books written in the community, uh, like Fluent Python, Think Python. There is an excellent book called uh, Python Handbook. All of those help you to know what are the standard practices that you follow while writing Python. Also, people, some people might uh, like reading through articles on blogs. There, there are a lot of them. Just it's it's just a search away. What do you sign? You want to say something? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, my preference, personal preference. So I started with the link that is given below. It's a, a PYM book, Python for you and me. Uh, and it's a book that I started with. And it's probably the only book that I read other than docs.python.org. And uh, other than that, there's this other book that I suggested. Uh, that's on, also uh, one I read, but it's more into like, it's not a Python book, rather you build something uh, with Python. So. I really recommend the other book as well. But as I, as Namaran said, like, uh, if you're trying to learn Python, I would say uh, probably start with a simpler book. And then for depth, you can either pick a Fluent Python or Think Python. And if you really want to get into the intricate details of how things are implemented, I would say, or uh, I would say once you are into building things, you would end up in, like I would say, uh, referring to docs.python.org. So at the end of the day, I would say like docs.python.org would be become your friend for the reference point. You would spend a good amount of time reading the docs, the 
the uh, documentation of the method and it's really very well written like it's one of the best i would say out there okay so hearing about science preference now what i prefer so there's a big disclaimer here i am a huge maths buff i <laughs> love mathematics so how i started with python was there is a beautiful website called projectoiler.net it contains a variety of mathematical problems that you can solve they are very simple problems so i went on to see how can i solve those using python and in the process i learned a lot of uh features or practices in python and in the way it made me a better python programmer uh so yeah if you like mathematics feel free just so you can just also create your own calculator or some sort of uh, spreadsheet for yourself now it now there is a heartfelt advice that whenever you start something uh, in this example start learning python find something which excites you find a domain or a problem out there in the society which really interests you that you are really annoyed with hey just let's fix this problem uh, when you try to start with those kind of problems uh, you are really passionate when doing this stuff uh, as i gave you examples of solving mathematical problems since that was my passion sign gave you an example of writing your own games computer games with python you can also start with let's say a to do list build your own task tracker using python see how how you like it or maybe build a tic tac toe game or automate stuff like uh, uh, for example say if i touch some button in my phone my light should go on or light should go off my fan should turn on all of that uh, anything that interests you start with that now coming on to things which you can leverage to use python python has a like uh, like huge universe of libraries or packages as we call in the uh, python domain uh, that you can use to perform certain options so here we have put out a word cloud where you can see based on the domain uh, what are the prominent uh, packages available to you for example if i want to write a web application let's say a website uh, i can use django i can use flask both of them suit their own different purposes uh, let's say what about writing a desktop application i can use pkinter or pyqt or what if i what if the application that i write on desktop also i want it to work on mobile you can write using kiwi so all of these are very user friendly frameworks to do those kind of user ended uh, products you can also tinker with hardware using micro python or circuit py you can light a bulb as i told you can have a microcontroller on top of your or like beneath, like in between your power and your light uh, that listens for some request and then turns that on or off now one big chunk where python is heavily used is in the data science or machine learning or artificial intelligence industry for data science we have very popular and very powerful libraries like pandas jupyter numpy scipy all of the, using all of that or some of that or any subset depending on your requirement you can perform like very heavy duty tasks you can so let's say for example you did some data science you did some analysis what if you want to visualize them python has you covered you have matplotlib altair or seaborn which are very good libraries to use uh, reiterating again this is uh, this by means is not an exhaustive list of packages uh, these are just some prominent ones that people use for machine learning you can use keras or tensorflow and generate your own models uh also python as i told earlier is heavily used in academia too uh, there are libraries like astropy or sunpy or md analysis you can use them for doing your research now uh md analysis i have used it in my undergrad itself because i i was coming from that background where i needed to do molecular analysis and md analysis uh, uh was a perfect tool to do that 
uh, going ahead. So, uh, so Nabarun, I just wanted to add one thing. Uh, sure. So, I uh, Shilpa gave the introduction that I actually jumped a lot of things. Like I started with desktop, moved to web, and basically moved to more lower down the line. I did infrastructure. And one of the key things I would say, like the best part was Python was the only common thing. I started writing five GTK apps. I did uh, work around those. The common thing was Python. Then I moved to web working on Django things. I worked at a startup where I was building, uh, the company was based on Django. And then the next company I was doing infrastructure, like when I told Fedora, so Fedora is primarily a Flask shop. So all the release that happens, happens with Flask. And then the infrastructure is managed to Ansible. And then when I want to do hardware related things, it was MicroPython. So I would say I never went to the, because I was more interested to going the depth of infrastructure. So I, I went this stack, but then if you see like how you can use just one language, knowing the semantics of one language and move around from the whole stack. And this is one thing I really love about Python. Yeah, go ahead, Nabur. Thank you. So there, there are one more subset of people like you have already started uh, exploring Python. You already have done a bit of Python development. And your question is, how do you get better at Python? Let's see how you can get better at Python. The first thing is practice. Mm -hmm. uh, as uh, there's an old saying, uh, practice makes someone perfect. So practice actually teaches you a lot write code, iterate on it, you will make mistakes. You, you will make a lot of mistakes and mistakes are good because you learn from mistakes. The second thing is practice again. The third thing, it is again practice. <laughs> practice is something which is like non-negotiable while learning anything. It is not just in terms of Python, it is in terms of anything out there in the world. It's the same with a programming language too. Coming on to a different part, other than practice, how you can make your code more visible. What you can do is contribute to open source software. There are a lot of benefits that you get uh, when contributing to open source software. One of them is that you get to experience a wide range of coding styles. You get to experience a lot of ways that Python is being used, a lot of ways where Python is useful, a lot of ways to like develop Python. And one more thing, one very important thing that often gets neglected is when you write code uh, in the open source domain, your code is reviewed by folks around the globe. Since the open source community cannot be divided based on geography or anything, and the community is a very distributed system of people. Uh, anyone can come in, contribute code, review code. That teaches you a lot about how things are written or how you can uh, like skill yourself up in this domain. And uh, there are a lot of open source projects. There are innumerable open source projects in the Python domain, uh, as uh, we saw in the cloud earlier that uh, there are a lot of projects that act, real people use. Uh, so this is this is one of the ways. And uh, like personal experience, I learned a lot of Python contributing to open source. Uh, this journey started out uh, when I was in college in my uh, second year, presumably. So it's been like half a decade that uh, I am writing Python. Uh, most parts of it in the open source domain, probably four, four and a half years. Uh, and it helped me a lot. So this suggestion I would give out to everyone to find a project that is very close to your interests and what you do daily, and then just start contributing. And with that, I'll pass the baton again to Sam. Thanks, Nabarun. So uh, just to add a few lines on the previous slide itself. So uh, another point I would like to add that uh, usually I see a lot of uh, people who are trying to contribute to open source that uh, it's tough. I would say it's tough. It's not that easy. Like my first uh, patch, uh, which I did in, I guess, 2011, 
to a Django project took me a month. And I would say like a lot of people get disheartened or get demoralized seeing that it's so tough or they don't get issues. So I would say that uh, it is tough. And if you stick with it, as Nabarun said, practice and practice and practice. And if you try around the same problem again and again and again, you eventually get to it. And uh, try to stick with this project. So my uh, one of the projects that I started with is Fedora uh, back in 2011, which was which I'm talking about right now. Like the first batch went to Fedora, and I'm still contributing to Fedora in various uh, projects. I'm mentoring people on projects. I maintain projects. So I stuck with the community. So it's important to stick to a community because you then know uh, you get to know the overall picture on how everything connects. Now, uh, another thing that comes into place is the interest. My interest was around operating system. So I came down to operating system projects. If you are into machine learning, I would say pick up a machine learning, try to see uh, projects which are there out there, try to contribute to them. And usually there's a community around it, or I would say there's a set of projects around it. And eventually uh, you will go around uh, those projects and contribute to the other projects as well. So you stick to that projects. Moving ahead to the next slide, attend the local meetups and conferences. Conferences lets you meet a very wide range of people. And local meetups are things where, because conferences happens in various places, local meetups are one of the best places you can go to in case you don't cannot con travel to various conferences. And so Bank Pipers is the one that is there in Bangalore. So Bank Piper started, I guess, 2005, if I recall correctly. And uh, in the recent times, there is a PyLadies Bangalore chapter. Also, there are PyLadies chapters around the uh, around India as well as globe. Uh, but there are various meetups that happen locally. So I would say encourage you to attend those meetups. If you, uh, moving on to the next slide, you'll see that uh, the uh, meetups that I have listed down. So if you are in Pune, attend the Python Pune meetup. If you're in Hyderabad, uh, attend the Hyde Pi meetup. Chennai has Chennai, uh, Chennai Pi, and then you have Pi Delhi, which is in Delhi. So they uh, they all do week, uh, Bank Pipers does uh, weekly, uh, sorry, monthly uh, meetups. Pi Delhi, if I recall correctly, they used to do by uh, twice in a month. So the variation might vary, but they do meet up, join the group, and you will get to learn a lot. I started, uh, I used to, there was a brief period around 2015, I used to like uh, work with the volunteers who were running the Bank Pipers meetup. And I personally, I used to take talks and all. I personally learned from the folks who were even attending. So there's a huge, there's a session that happens after like a break off session. You can learn a lot of things there as well. Uh, moving on to the next slide. Uh, so PyCon India. So PyCon India is an annual conference that happens uh, every year. It started in 2009 and it has been happening every year. It ha moves around cities. We used to have in Bangalore around like 2013. La last one I attended in Bangalore was 2015. And uh, it then went around Chennai, Hyderabad, Delhi, and now we uh, we're back in Bangalore, but due to the pandemic reasons, we had to move it from a virtual, uh, sorry, move it from an offline event to a virtual event. So PyCon India is happening uh, virtually this year. The dates are, the main conference happens on 2nd and 3rd of October, and we are having desk sprints. So if you are looking to contribute to your project, that's one of the places you can be in because you start to, uh, there are mentors who would help you to get into open source projects. And there are workshops that would happen. And the tickets are not officially out yet, but we have created a link where you can go and subscribe for the tickets. And uh, wherever you, uh, you are in the world, you don't have to travel anywhere at the comfort of your home. You can attend this uh, conference uh, sitting at your home. So this is a really good uh, uh, scenario where you can just sit at your home and learn new things. Uh, yeah, moving ahead. So uh, the advice returns. So Python, uh, so this is the topic that Nabarun told, like find a domain. And I would like to emphasize on that, that 
please uh, try to find a domain that really interests you. It, might, it is difficult. It's not that easy to find a domain that interests you. You might switch around with a lot of domain, but eventually you will uh, come to a domain which really you like it, staying and stay around with it because that would eventually help you. And uh, one thing I would like to add here is uh, in scenarios, what happens is that is basically go into depth rather than be shallow. So if you stay in one place, in that case, you go more and more and more into depth. So that actually uh, gives more credibility and more solid hold on the language or the framework that you're using, be it machine learning, be it data science, be it uh, infrastructure or anything other, anything else. Yeah, moving ahead. Kaboom. So uh, this is, I'm talking from the experience. Uh, so I have been uh, with uh, attending PyCon India since 2012 and helping out bank pipers from 2013 end. So an interesting trend that I saw. So uh, earlier I used to see a lot of, a uh, lot of infrastructure related things happening in Python. And slowly down the line, I saw a trend moving towards data science. Even the talks that are coming down in the conferences, the uh, data science, machine learning, the kind of the genre completely moved to the other side. Even the meetups that were uh, uh, hosting, like their talks also moved to a different, like the machine learning side or data science side of things. So I would say the trend is that India is picking, there are a lot of companies that are coming up. I even see, like I was today itself today, going through my LinkedIn and I saw one uh, guy posting his resume and so I, and just for a review and saw that he has done a lot of courses around data science. So I would say there is a trend going on. There is a need for people to join the uh, workforce in the data science and the machine learning and the AI field. So uh, because there are talks happening around, so I would say j just go to the meetups or the conferences to know more about it. Or you can also, there are courses around Internet is a uh, wide open space. So just uh, read the materials out there. Uh, going ahead. So uh, this again, I refer to the index that I was talking about before is the July headline all time high for the R programming language. Uh, so R programming uh, is really picking up and uh, it's, I would say there are libraries around in Python but uh, I today in only I read an article uh, in Times of India where they wrote exclusively about how the lang uh, language is growing and how there are uh, more optimized uh, uh, algorithms uh, for R. So if you're starting off with Python, you can probably pick up uh, pandas and related libraries. But if you want to take it more seriously, I would say you can uh, move over to the R programming. And I would say like there are companies like if you take usually like uh, there are situation probably uh, Navarin will explain it more. So there are situation you might need to like for the betterment or for the optimization part, you need to move out to different languages. So uh, R in this space is really picking up. So yeah, moving ahead. Um, so as Cyan was saying that uh, you can do most of the things in Python, uh, nearly all of them. But uh, when you want efficiency or efficiency while running your software, you might need to venture out uh, into different places. I'll just give you sh some short examples uh, of those things. Uh, for example, if you want to write a very high performant uh, web server or a uh, system, you might want to use Golang or Rust because they really shine in that use case. Uh, in case where you want to write like a single page web application, you can write it in JavaScript because our browser natively renders JavaScript. In which case that would be more beneficial. Uh, if you are doing some kind of uh, very highly distributed data science workloads, uh, you may explore Scala or Java because uh, that is another paradigm where in the Apache or Hadoop ecosystem, you can really benefit from writing in those languages. Uh, so uh, with that, uh, let us open the floor for questions and uh, just uh, write it once. Uh, you can reach us out on these handles, uh, you can reach out cyan on gmail at udoka.in. You can reach me out at hey.nava.in. Uh, 
hey at the rate now dot run uh, or you can reach out uh, to us on twitter as at udoka or the only nabarun and uh, if you're interested in the conference please go ahead and register on the link uh, we will send you an email as soon as we start registrations or start the tickets uh, and with that uh, that's all from our side sign you want to add something uh, no nothing else from my side that's pretty much Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you Nabarun. And thank you, Sanan, for that deep dive on uh, Python. We already have uh, questions coming in, uh, you know, and our chat box is open. If any of the readers uh, or viewers wish to, you know, send us questions, please do send in. The first question is from Ram Reddy. What additional skills along with Python can improve career prospects? Is Python and Azure a desirable skill set? Uh, so uh, it again defines like it is based on the domain that you pick. So Python along with like if you're into web, then probably you'll pick up Django and then uh, uh, then you probably learn Elasticsearch and then AWS and other cloud providers. So it's basically uh, Python is just the language part. And then there's the stack that comprises it. So there are other uh, frameworks that you need to learn over time to build the complete uh, get the complete picture of things. And Python Azure is really picking a speed. There are a lot of development happening in Azure space as well. And uh, I would say that uh, it's really picking up so you can pick up Python and the Azure combination. But uh, uh, along with that, uh, you uh, you need to pick up other frameworks. Like if you're building, as I told, if, you, if you're building a web app, uh, in that case, you need to pick up frameworks like Django and then to deploy or doing caching. So you might need to pick up a database. So uh, to become a full stack, you need to know the complete stack. And Python usually has wrappers, drivers around it to help you completely through the way. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. OK. Uh, this is, uh, again, a reminder to the viewers to uh, send in your questions. The chat box is open. And um, there are multiple questions already, uh, Sian and Navarun. Uh, but from my side, you know, before even if somebody has to read and understand PIM book, uh, for instance, uh, what would that require? Would you re require to know math uh, or, I mean, somebody like me who can just knows English and some economics and all that, can I also understand? Yes, you can. So yes. uh, Python for you and me is a book which has a lot of examples. So it starts off really base, as basic and I... I actually completed within like I sat for two hours probably as I completed, but I had a programming ba background, but that's a book I usually recommend as I told, like we have a, a run a Linux user group and we recommend that book as well because it's very beginner friendly. It teaches like adding to numbers, adding us, us, right? Creating the power multiplication and all those function and then slowly increasing the uh, depth, you know, and uh, another thing to add here is the book is very example oriented than theory based. So you learn it by doing things. So okay. that's the reason you will pick up things quickly. Yeah. Okay. Okay. There's this question from uh, Shritij. Uh, for someone who wants to start coding, is Python a good place to start? Or should I start with something like C? Um, I think like uh, both serve their own use cases. Like if you want to just learn logic and programming, Python is a really good place to start out with to build your skill set. as in okay. how do you write code? So in order to know the structure or in order to train your mind to do that, uh, Python is a really good place to start. Uh -huh. Now, once you go into that territory of algorithms, data structures, then you may explore the territory of C or C++, uh, either of those languages. Yeah, uh, yeah. What about so Java? Uh, yes, so Java is also one other paradigm where you can uh, explore the field. Uh, now, they are like ecosystem, there are some ecosystem changes when you go to the Java field or C++ or C field uh, after doing uh, some amount of Python. So in Java field, you might see different idioms or different practices. And your skill set will develop in a different line. So, uh, depending on that, you have to choose your path forward. Okay. 
okay okay i feel that uh, python is a very forgiving language so uh, that's the reason like i would say like pick up picking up the if you are learning going into coding so python is the language to start off with where you learn yeah. programming and usually it's said in computer science that it's just the syntax that change so okay. uh, once you know how a loop works or a conditional work or how a module works you can easily adapt to other languages is so it so python is basically because of its forgiving nature uh, you can pick up it very uh, universities and uh, uh, engineering colleges and all teaching python in a big way nowadays or uh, um, yeah go ahead Navar. so when i was in college when i was just graduating in 2018 uh several colleges had actually started to have python and they replaced their c or c++ whatever they were teaching oh, really? depending on the needs yes and they were changing that with python oh, so to give it? to give an example in my college there is a branch called engineering physics hmm. they already had started teaching python i think in 2017 or 2018 or oh, okay. 2016 okay. Uh, either of those intake years and as far as the review goes they were really happy Okay. Switching okay. to that front. Also, like I, if I recall correctly, like CBSC also moved. Uh, like I have Python as optional. Probably you can pick it up. Like in my time, it was C plus plus which I took. But these days, you can give an CBSC computer science exam in Python. If I recall correctly. Oh really? Okay. Shilpa. Yeah, we have a question from Nandita Gupta Shah. She's done her basic course in Python, and uh, she wants to know. Uh, what what is it that she can uh, be referred to because she wants to make a game in python can you suggest a website or a course for that yeah so uh, the book that i told is a good book is uh, inventing the computer games is using python and uh, that's a good book which you can try out and then uh, that i have seen i don't do a lot of courses on that front i'm i'm mostly a reader than uh, i do courses so but i have seen while going through coursera there are uh, uh, various uh, courses out there which help with the game development using python but uh, the book that i suggested i really loved it so i can give a vouch for that book totally so you want to add to that uh so in the python wiki uh, the official wiki there is a page on game programming uh, probably you can check that out uh, what i'm doing is i am pasting that link in the chat uh, in the live chat okay uh, if it can be propagated to whoever asked the question that's like uh, that would really be it i just posted it there okay thanks thanks okay I have this question from Chinnu Kumar. How to connect with the Python open source community? Any online resources? Um. So uh, we uh, one other thing I would say is uh, we have the meetups. Uh, the local meetups is usually the place where you get to connect with the open source community. Or other than that, uh, you can usually. Uh, every open source project either have a slack or a irc or a zulip so our python india is uh, handled or like we communicate via zulip which is again a python based project so you can probably contribute to it there are indian contributors who contribute to the project of zulip but uh, like fedora uh, whole of fedora community communicates via irc so i would say that uh, either go to this uh, meetups where you get to know these people giving talks and they usually know how you can get into it the second point is uh, if you want to get into suppose django or ansible or any of this kind of framework just see where they usually the developers hang out around they it's usually open source so they usually hang out somewhere be it irc be it zulip so join there say hi i am new to this uh, project just give me a bug and they will be happy to help to give you a bug because open source projects do need people uh, to contribute and it's basically both of uh, basically you they really like to mentor people okay. and the third place is i would say dev sprints which again i told uh, which happens in various conferences so you can probably keep a track of it and join those dev sprints i know that i guess europe python recently had one a conference that happened a couple of days back pycon india is having a session so this is again a place where you can interact with the open source developers okay 
uh, adding to that, I want to give a very valuable suggestion here. Uh, so what helped me a lot in, you just need to say hi to whoever is maintaining the project. You just need to go ahead. Uh, just leave all your apprehensions behind and nobody is going to judge you. Uh, yeah. Just go ahead and say hi. Uh, I'm really interested in this project. Uh, and I feel that I can improve the project in certain way. And these are my skill set and I can help in such a way. Uh, and I will say that as a maintainer of a few projects, mm. it, it feels really great to have new mm -hmm. engineers coming up to you and asking for some work and which can also develop their skills. People in very... Uh, sorry, Sujit. I they always respond, you. is it? Yes, uh, they would respond. All of the active project maintainers usually respond. Mm -hmm. uh, just be cognizant of the time zones because uh, <laughs> not all people are in our time zone. Uh, people are distributed and time zones are hard. So. Okay. Yeah. Shilpa? Yeah, we have a question from Pavan Sorab. What are the advantages of Python 3 over Python 2? Um, so it's more about language evolution and how the language evolved as a whole. Python 3 has a lot new features and not a lot more uh, readability. And basically, you can do more things. It's And uh, on top of that, Python 2 has been deprecated. Uh, Python 2 is not in support cycle anymore uh, since this January. Uh, so to give a short answer, Python 3 has more features than Python 2. That's why you should use Python 3. Yeah, there are a lot of optimizations that has happened. Like a uh, simple example, like in Python 2, there's a range function. And the implementation of range function is completely different as uh, in uh, Python 3. So there are optimizations happening. There are features like asynchronous programming in Python. There are frameworks which are just built for or modules that are just shipped for Python 3. So you get a more bigger uh, and faster uh, language in Python, basically in with Python 3. And Python 2.7 uh, did well, but it's deprecated. So I would say like, yeah, if move as soon as possible if you haven't, because again, there are security fixes and all those things that will be shipped to Python 3. I have a question from Madhu. I'm currently learning Python as part of data science and would like to extend my knowledge in Python to be able to build applications. How do I start off? Uh, yeah. Yes, so it's more about what kind of application do we want to build? Mm -hmm. uh, so what I'm guessing is if you're already doing data science using Python, uh, at least your uh, core concepts of the language are in place. So all you need to do is find the domain that you want to build applications for. For example, if you want to, you can develop web applications or desktop or mobile applications. Uh, depending on them, as I enumerated all the technologies or packages that are used, choose something simple and just get started. Build something and then if the package does not uh, suffice for your use case, then find something else. So for example, if you want to start with web programming, start with maybe Flask or Fast API. Uh, which are really easy to learn and use. Uh, if you want to do mobile programming or desktop, start with Kiwi. They have really great documentation and it will really uh, make your uh, journey easier. So on the idea side, I usually uh, say that something I usually say that scratch your own itch. So if you have a problem, if you automate that problem, so that can be an application just to give an example. I do photography and I used to keep multiple copies of the same image in different directories. So I, my first uh, kind of, I would say my first Python projects, the code is really bad, but then I went ahead and wrote a program which would identify all the, uh, scan through all the images and look through their uh, metadata and give me images which are duplicate. So basically if you start solving your own problems by automating it, maybe make the deployment of your blog simple or something or the other. If you are, uh, suppose, working on data science, so if you think around something which you can automate. So these are small small applications uh, which you can start building to, and this would lead eventually, you will have more ideas to big, uh, think of bigger ideas. Okay, okay. Shilpa? Yeah, we have a question from Shritej. I'm a 15 year old student and have completed a, a Udemy course on Python. What should I do as the next step? 
how basic would that course be any you, you think no details no idea no i i would say like if we like if the person has gone like the basic through uh, programming uh it dip, again uh, if i was in the same scenario i would have gone with hardware i would probably pick up a um, arduino or a, uh maybe uh node and use smaller board and try to do tinker around with the board with micropython uh i told the same thing to my one of my cousin and he also is interested in that he is around the same age and he likes playing around like build robotics around that because i guess that uh, that is where you get to uh, if you you really get interested in computer so uh, rather than building uh, frameworks if you tinker around the computers in general you will uh, feel more connected with the computer at that age so that's one suggestion if you are more into like if you want to build something i would say the other option is web i would say okay okay the question um from vinayak dikshit which python domain do you suggest for a mechanical engineer if they have done a basic python programming course um it's it's again like uh, reiterating sign here scratch your mm-hmm. own itch mm-hmm. so try to find something that uh, is very relevant to your field and you find okay. problematic uh, for example if you're in mechanical engineering uh, you might be frustrated with thermodynamics just an assumption not to quote me mm-hmm. anywhere uh, so if you're frustrated with some problems then f- find an automation to the problem find something which you can automate and okay. get done with uh, so that's how i used to do stuff like uh, any assignments that i thought of were like too like tedious or too much uh, manual i would just write a program which would solve it for me and that is perfectly fine there's a package library for practically everything right practically yeah. everything so right. in python you will find a package for anything anything out anything. there in the world another thing you can do is uh, if you are learning a language maybe replicate that package like get the idea of that package what it does build a wireframe what uh, would be suppose you are building a web framework or suppose uh, interacting with the hardware so maybe build those apis uh, get those apis what the library does and write the same library on your own so that would give you a much better understanding and uh, so even like navarun in his college days uh, did the same like i hear his stories he did a lot of robotics and things so yeah is there any other language which can do this wide range can java do a lot of this uh, or python beats everybody unheard of <laughs> i huh? have never heard like uh, anything beating python really it's, it's unheard of like yeah uh, like all domains yes uh, as i mentioned right some in some use cases you might find other languages useful but mm-hmm. there is mm-hmm. not a language which uh, does a broad range of things that python can do you are saying no other language can really compete with it right yeah but i have not seen you can ba- basically do everything and it does scale well like uh instagram a company such huge it's a really big company and it uses it uses python so python really works uh, and if you uh, really want to optimize then you can probably move to other uh, languages really to optimize the problem because in computer science when you pick up a problem you really need to before you start coding you start to think around the problem what is the problem and then spend the more amount you spend on the problem the lesser time you take to code okay so uh, in that decision you might end up using other language but python usually would fit them all like from image processing to ml to infrastructure to everything would uh, basically can be done with python okay okay but some of those things can probably be done better than some other language for instance right. is it yeah yes mm-hmm. okay shilpa yeah pavan wants to know uh, which ide is recommended for python coding uh, uh, i would say whatever you are comfortable with yes so like, uh, there comfort- are Yeah, comfort ahead, is the key because you are writing the code uh, what i am comfortable using you might not be so there is no universal solution here it's like your own personal thing exactly so uh, the people a lot of people this days are picking up vs code uh, pycharm is also a very good it but personally i have been stuck with a editor called vim 
for past 10 years now and i'm just using it for everyday life like i just use vim uh, but uh, i know number of users of editor called space max and uh, it's basically the more you comfortable because you spend time building that muscle memory so you don't want to move to some other frame uh, uh, editor but these days a lot of people want uh, id so they usually end up with pycharm or vs code they both serve the purpose but if you are a person who wants uh, terminal based or uh, somewhere on the you can do emacs you have space max you have a vim editor so you can go with those also i personally use vim for every day programmer okay i have a question from kirtan um the first part of it i think i can answer based on what you guys have said uh, how effective is python for analytics data science from whatever i've heard from you i think python is the language for that uh, uh but I'll, my uh, that i mean there's a second part of the question i'll come to that later but r for instance can it do data science uh, and analytics better than python can or the other de depends on the use case and all that so it's it's about how you see things like it's about your vision of the world uh, so r if you're coming from a statistics background if you have a lot of stats knowledge then r has some interesting uh, idioms that you can directly use for example if you want to do some sort of standard deviation just mentioning uh, like there can be much more complex metrics that you can get from your data uh, r probably has some more verbose tools but for example if after analyzing some of your data you want to build a machine learning model r can also do that but python has more dynamic tools to do that so uh, okay. using using the same code and the same way of reading and manipulating your data eventually you can grow bigger uh, in the python world yeah than in r you're saying than in r so for data science and uh, what he says uh, data science and analytics you are saying python is the language to go to so you can start out with python uh, there may be some use cases where some r may be suitable just okay. explore A any other language which is good in uh, analytics and data science like uh, these days mostly python and r are being used r, uh, as i mentioned scala is used in the spark world so spark is another technology uh, which is used for distributed computation of machine learning models and data okay. there uh, it was natively written in scala i guess if i remember correctly and okay. that's where that language suffices okay there's a second part of that question from kirtan uh, and what level of python knowledge do companies expect from a fresher <laughs> um so from a fresher uh, like companies mostly ex, uh, expect that uh, they have very good analytical skills as in given a problem mm -hmm. uh, drill down the problem uh, chunk it out into several parts okay uh, milestone them and then solve each part one by one that is a very important trait that someone trait. needs to have okay uh, it's mostly not about libraries or packages it's very good if you know the tricks of the trade but okay. if you know how to know the tricks of tricks of the trade uh -huh. that's a very important skill set that a fresher can have so and how 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 do companies gauge that what uh, do they give them a test or how, how how does it typically happen uh, it happens mostly through a combination of test a programming mm -hmm. test and mm -hmm. interview so interview. you have technical mm -hmm. interviews as well as behavioral interviews to see okay. how you solve the problem mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so they can understand your analytical abilities through those uh, program and the test that they give yes right. and okay. uh, another thing to add here is uh, there are dip, again is different for different companies so there might be companies a lot of them i would say use this tools like hacker rank or hacker or to uh, filter the first set so probably algorithm uh, is something you can look into and learn about that to clear up the first round and the second round uh, is uh, usually you second third and the other rounds primarily go into pair programming or system what programming, programming sorry uh, pair programming pair so programming you, yeah so you basically sit down with an engineer of the uh, company and okay. they will ask you questions and then you solve out the pro pro problem okay now, uh, the thing to add here is again you should know the basics really well uh, think like if uh, suppose you are picking up dictionaries 
how is dictionary implemented what talks around it or know the basics really in depth then going to the next level these are basics of python python okay in python only or in general programming languages also different languages are different ways to tackle the problem but it's good to know uh if you're picking up a language be really strong as i told go down the depth of the language uh the next thing is uh, uh the analytical skills as another one told like uh if you know something uh in different domain how you can apply it to the current scenario and uh, giving interviews a skill you probably develop with time Re always after giving an interview learn what are the mistakes you did and over time you will get better at it and uh, like in my example i usually go very basics and try, usually ask questions so i have seen this that interviewers usually ask questions from what they know and uh, that's how it goes and so try to know the basics really well and then move on to as advance it as an add on package never something as a suggestion in general suggestion i usually tell people that don't add a lot of fields or th something that you don't know for example just add the things you know and they build their skill okay 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 also 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 one thing to add here is uh, so we talked about a generic point of view uh, one more thing is also know what the company is using that you are interviewing for it's very important so whatever you are expected of so if you can show that you have the skill set that you are expected that becomes a very good uh, criteria okay. to judge okay. research the company basically research around the companies if they have yes. open source projects see which project they hmm. do okay 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 shilpa Yeah, we have this question. How do you compare uh, PySpark uh, versus Pandas for data analysis? Uh, yep. So it's about like Pandas is something that you use uh, if you are using the same computer. It's it was uh, written for a single system use case. Uh, PySpark, as I mentioned, it's like a distributed computing scenario. Uh, so as far as I have seen. Uh, PySpark is used in that domain where, uh, let's say, you have a problem. Let's say I want to find uh, squares of numbers until one trillion trillion. Now I want to space that out into se several machines. Uh, then that Spark uh, will come into picture. Uh, so that helps a lot. Although there are uh, several abstractions uh, or packages built on top of Pandas which can uh, achieve the same thing with Pandas. Okay. Uh, I just this this pi ladies is that is that for women in Bangalore? Right. Yeah. Oh, is it okay? They they also meet. Uh, uh, they used to have uh, when it was uh, pre pand pandemic situation. They used to meet. They have regular meetups. Okay. And uh, there is also uh, Indian chapter. So they also do virtual calls. There was recently a virtual call of pi ladies that happened. Uh -huh. Where uh, the C Python code dev Marietta actually joined, uh, so uh, and gave talk. So uh, nowadays, I guess they are doing it virtually. But they when uh, uh, before that they used to do it offline. Okay, okay. This one last Rust is becoming popular for what reason? It is it is used to write very high performance network systems. Oh. So. Uh, So Rust is one very uh, like recent development uh, in the programming paradigm industry uh, where you can write even an operating system using Rust, a bootloader using Rust, okay. or uh, like a as I said, a very high performance networking software using Rust. Okay. Okay. Yeah, and uh, primarily around the systems uh, space, a lot of tools are being. Written or uh, even Mozilla started it. They started using it in a couple of places for Rust. Okay. Okay. Great. Shilpa, I'm done now. Um, yeah. Yeah. My question. One question are... from my side. Uh, if you look at some of the recent trackings, I Triple E Spectrum, where Python has dislodged Java, uh, and uh, Java has moved one or two notches down. So, is it because uh, one um, the you know. syntax is easier to adapt and hence you see a lot of traction but on the flip side we also hear developers 
uh, say that this is not their first go-to language. They would have picked up something else. They come to Python later. Is it because the syntax is much more easier? Uh, so, uh, seeing the space, so uh, just based on the experience, I find a lot of startups, uh, sorry, a lot of enterprise companies use Java. And given the Java is taught, I would say Blue Jay, and then it's taught in colleges also, and then moved down to companies. So, there's a trend of people using Java. So, probably that's the reason they pick up uh, that as a language. That same goes for even C, C++. It used to be taught in a lot of schools. So a lot of people started giving C, C++, Java in the resume was like the de facto standard. Mm. And uh, slowly down the line, I would say a lot of people, these days, a lot of people are interested in data science. So a lot of people end up learning Python. Maybe uh, from the popularity side, it maybe is possible that uh, Python is something they get, get to know later down the line because it's still not very famous in the school side or the, that part of the high school part of uh, site. So it may be because of that, that people pick up uh, uh, other languages first. Even for me, uh, Python was the third languages that I started. So, uh, but again, if you go to enterprise company, I have heard like Java, Java if you talk of Java versus Python, uh, I have heard a lot of the people who praise about Java, Java is a very good language. If you want to really build enterprise big companies, they do really build up well. It's a very thought of language, it's scalable. And uh, that's the reason Java is still prevalent in uh, the recent industries. And on the other side, a lot of, because the nature of startups is so fast, so people start using Python. So uh, like when I, back in 2013, that time, like there were a handful of companies used to use, to Python, use Python. And in the recent trend, uh, in last five, six years, the number of companies have grown, I think the thing will change. Like, Slowly, as you see, like CBSC adopting to Python, uh, pro like colleges would adopt to Python. So it might be possible because uh, it might be possible that Python becomes the first language for a lot of people. Uh, but till the time, because till the time you don't have Python as in the high school or college level, I think like people will pick up other languages as the first yes. language. And uh, another point to add here is like, even if you suppose there's a school and they tell like Python is the primary language, they then need to find the talent for to teach Python and the talent might be missing. So there are a lot of blockers there. So slowly I would say the trend will change, but uh, till then like uh, Python would be like the second or third language people pick up. Correct. So uh, to give a perspective here, like when I was in my first year, like 2014, uh, like all of the branches of our of IIT Roorkee uh, actually taught either C++ or Java. Uh, so Python was nowhere there. But by the time <laughs> I graduated, at least one uh, branch or engineering stream started teaching Python as the first language. So we see an eventual change in types uh, here. And, and uh, Python is still not, uh, sorry. So Python is still not taught in like, uh, colleges, there is not there in the curriculum for a lot of colleges. So it's usually the people who want to learn, pick up this language, they see the trend and pick up. Like when I was in college, it was like, I guess there were two only Python programmers in the whole batch who used to do Python. So it was one of my senior and me. So uh, that may have increased a lot, but uh, we need to see, see that shift happening, like teaching Python as a primary language in college. But is it also true? I think I asked you this before um, that if, um, uh, this is something that a Java person told us that I, I, I somebody might create the application in Python, but when finally uh, you have to productionize it, uh, you do it in Java. I, I'm not even sure what exactly that means, but uh, is, scaling is that... uh, it might be possible that uh, like a lot of people build the POC, the post proof of concept in Python, and then uh, when they are hitting scaling issues, uh, that time they might move to a different languages again. Uh, a lot of company might do, do it for the talent pool. The Java talent pool is bigger, so they might find more people, but uh, there are companies which scale, scale out really well. Uh, like I gave the Instagram of, uh, sorry, I gave the example of Instagram. There are companies, YouTube, Google, they all use uh, Python. So it's again, uh, a lot of people do because you find talents for Java very easily. Okay, 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 okay. 
so here like you have to make the decision of you want to go faster or if you want to go if you want to do scale first so usually the choices come comes to that like build your minimum viable product in the shortest amount of time possible that's where python shines python shines oh, when you yeah. have your minimum viable product ready uh -huh. when you put it out to consumers into the wild uh -huh. then see an uptake in your products usage right then you venture into the territory of optimization so okay. optimization in case of newer businesses is never like is most of the times not the priority at first but it comes as a priority later when you have like for example let's say you have maybe 1 million customers i think python can still handle that okay but when you grow to uh -huh. maybe hundreds of millions of uh, requests okay then probably you need to find some optimizations you have to optimize okay. your existing code base which is in python or migrate to some other thing okay okay now there are a lot of company which is the microservices architecture is coming around so in that you get the freedom that you build one service basically you divide the uh, uh, complete application into different services and then pick the best language for that service and then build it okay. and then make okay. all the surface uh, services interact with each other uh, yeah so giving an okay. example like uh, the current company i work at uses ruby primarily but has some software written in python and go at the same time so okay 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 great i think we are running out of time shilpa yeah thank you thank you sayan and thank you nabarun that was really insightful and we also exceeded uh, yeah right. wonderful yeah Lots you made it wonderful. really simple <laughs> yeah you, <laughs> it was even like a crash course for both of us so thank yeah, you absolutely. so much <laughs> absolutely absolutely yeah, and all the best for your pycon all the best thank for you your pycon well. and uh, Anyway, you shared your handles so, and email ID so that people can reach out to you. Thank you so much, and it was a pleasure speaking with both of you. Yeah, yeah it, it was a pleasure for us too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, to have this uh, ground to speak. Okay, thanks. Great, all the best. Bye. Thank you. Yeah. Bye. Good evening. Bye. Bye. Bye.